Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive condition that causes sticky mucus to build up in the lungs and digestive system. It is a multi-system disease, meaning it affects various organ systems in the body. However, respiratory problems are usually the most prominent and leads to death in the majority of patients. Due to current and upcoming treatments, cystic fibrosis is no longer a condition that causes patients to die in their childhood, and nowadays about half of the people with cystic fibrosis will live past the age of 40. To understand the disease, we first uh, need to talk about the protein that it affects. This is the cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator. So, the cystic fibrosis gene is located on the long arm of chromosome 7 and it codes for the cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator or CFTR which is a chloride channel. Now this protein is very important in the maintenance of salt and water balance in the body as it will expel chloride ions outside the cell and so water follows. This is of particular importance in the mucociliary escalator of the lungs. So the lungs are composed of ciliated columnar epithelial cells and goblet cells. As shown in this image, uh, we have the goblet cells which are going to produce mucus and then we have the columnar epithelial cells which contain cilia uh, and these are these um, hair-like structures that are going to move the mucus out of the lungs. And that is very important because pathogens and foreign particles end up trapped in the mucus as we uh, inspire. And so this, the movement of cilia uh, is going to push mu mucus out of the lungs to be swallowed and destroyed. Now for this to happen, the mucus must have certain fluidity to it to allow the hair-like structures to move. And uh, this is what the cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator essentially does, as it allows water to leave the cell and um, make this mucus more fluid. In patients with cystic fibrosis, mutations cause the cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator to be either misfolded or unstable or even not synthesized at all. In this image, uh, it shows how the transporter might be faulty. Uh, despite it being a foreign language, uh, it's still very clear and easy to understand. Essentially, what's happening is that chloride ions are not expelled, and so water is retained inside the cell. And this is going to lead to airway dehydration and the production of a thick and sticky mucus. This thick and sticky mucus is much harder to remove from the lungs and so pathogens and foreign particles end up trapped in there. This is going to lead to inflammation and recurrent infection, which is a big problem in patients with cystic fibrosis. This progressively gets worse, leading to airway obstruction and bronchiectasis, which is the abnormal and uh, permanent dilation of the airways. Um, so remember that cystic fibrosis is a multi-system disease and the majority of patients are also going to suffer from pancreatic insufficiency. And this is caused because the pancreatic ducts may become clogged with mucus and so there is going to be an impaired secretion of pancreatic enzymes. Uh, this in turn leads to uh, difficulty absorbing nutrients, uh, namely protein, uh, fat and vitamins A, D, E and K. This problem may become so severe that cells in the pancreas start to die, including cells in the islets of Langerhans, such as the beta cells uh, responsible for secreting insulin. This is uh, going to lead to cystic fibrosis related diabetes, uh, which is a type of insulin dependent diabetes. So some of the other organs affected include the liver, where um, liver disease may develop in 20% of patients, usually presenting as an enlarged liver or as jaundice, uh, but it may be uh, severe to the point of the patient uh, vomiting blood. Also, most males with cystic fibrosis are going to be infertile, 
as the thick uh, mucinous uh, secretions may block the vas deferens and so it, it stops sperm from leaving the body. Now in terms of the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis, most of them are made at newborn screening such as the Hugh prick test. This test is going to measure for immunoreactive trypsinogen and if the concentration is greater than 80 micrograms per liter, then this indicates cystic fibrosis and further testing is required. So if your baby is positive for the um, uh, heel prick test, they will mo most likely be referred to the sweat test, which is the golden standard for the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis. And this test is going to measure chloride concentration in sweat. Here's a picture of a baby uh, undergoing the sweat test. And uh, patients with cystic fibrosis are going to have a raised chloride concentration in sweat. And this happens because the cystic fibrosis uh, transmembrane regulator works a bit differently in the sweat glands. Instead of excreting chloride ions out of the cell, it is going to reabsorb chloride ions in the ducts of the sweat glands. And this happens because we're trying to produce a more dilute sweat so that we can cool our bodies without losing too much salt. And so, if this protein is uh, faulty, such as in cystic fibrosis, uh, there's going to be almost no reabsorption of chloride ions in the ducts of the sweat glands, and so a lot of chloride is going to be lost with sweat. Now, here are some questions to make sure you've understood. Feel free to pause the video to think of your answer. Cystic fibrosis is The cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator is In normal physiology, what is the function of the cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator in lung tissue? Why do patients with cystic fibrosis develop pancreatic insufficiency? Why do patients with cystic fibrosis have increased chloride in their sweat? Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe.